This Road Dirt presentation is brought to you by Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers. Find them at lawtigers.com. What is up, Biker Bros? This is a Gen Z Biker here from Road Dirt TV. I'm currently on Kettle Moraine Lake here in Wisconsin. It's a brisk 26 degree day, I believe. Uh, we've got about 16 inches of ice, but I'm actually gonna be covering the steel shoe races here. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, the Steel Shoe Fund is a charity meant to raise money for fallen racers. So we've got about 150 racers today, I believe. Um, it's a six mile track laid out by a gentleman named Jeff Fredette. He is a very well-renowned uh, gentleman in the ice racing community that is really a great, does a great job at laying out these tracks. Um, but it's a six mile track and this is actually an endurance race. So it's a three hour long race, um, one bike, it can have multiple riders. Um, but whoever basically completes the most amount of laps in that three-hour time span wins the race. So this is my first ice race actually. Uh, quite the doozy if you ask me. Uh, it's pretty cold out here. I'm dressed head to toe in all of my snow gear. But nevertheless, I'm super excited to get to experience this. So these are the uh, racing pits over here. The starting line is all the way on that end, and this track actually spans the entire lake. As you can see, all those racers out there probably looking quite minuscule. And then right here is the checkpoint that tracks their amount of laps. There's an RFID scanner um, that has an, each bike on the number plate actually has an RFID card. Um, that makes sure to keep track of the amount of laps that they're doing. So now behind me here is the uh, race pits and then all the way at that end is actually where the race is gonna start. But if we turn around here, so this is actually the checkpoint that is uh, tracking the amount of laps that each racer does within that three hour time span. So on the number plate of each bike is an RFID uh, barcode so when they go through this scanner, it's gonna track, okay, one lap, two laps, 50 laps, whatever it is. Um, and then from there, they'll be able to determine the winner from each class um, in this race. There's about 150 racers today. I can't remember necessarily how many different classes there are. I know it's based on age and bike and whatnot, but nevertheless, super excited. And uh, let's go take a look at some of these bikes and uh, what they're outfitted with. So I'm joined here today with Ian Melanowski. He is an AMA previous ice racing uh, champion, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about his bike actually today. All right, so we got a CRF 250 here. Um, first thing you need for racing is obviously the tires. We get 1200 screws in the rear here. It's a, considered a knobby tire. Uh, there's two types, you know, a more of a flat track style and then the knobby. Same thing in the front. We're a little bit more aggressive tread. Um, then we get the fender brackets here. Those go through a lot of beating in the, the three hour. Yeah, we'll see. Um, three hour, we run a bigger tank. This is about a three gallon tank. Um, other than that, it's pretty much just a stock motocross bike. And then you have to have a tether um, yep, for the... Run a tether in case you go off, your bike shuts down with you. Now, how many how many screws are in these these tires again, you said? I would say about... Like 600, I've heard? Yeah, probably six to 800 in the rear, about 400 in the front, maybe 500. Okay. And... Um, you know, racing in general, I'm sure you've been down a couple times. Oh yeah. Is that correct to assume? Yep. Uh, how's that defer going down on ice to uh, to you know being being on you know a flat track or whatnot? Is it easier, harder, hurt more? The dirt's a little more forgiving. Okay. The ice when you're going down, it's pretty hard to save it. Um, and usually on the ice, you're gonna go down and you're gonna low side it instead of high siding. If you high side, it's even worse, but low siding is kinda of give it the best, tuck yourself in. It's a lot like falling on concrete. It's uh, pretty So hard. not fun. Not no, fun. not fun. It'll leave you bruised and bumped. And also, 
when you're on a racing surface like this, it, the ice is so rough that you can actually cut through your skin. Sure, with sure. It. And then you also gotta watch out, people behind you, the screws will just tear right through your skin. Yeah, and so that's actually why, if you can see here, that's why they have these fender guards. Um, I mean, you can imagine these are basically like sheet metal screws in here. Um, those would just eat right through skin like a like a slab of meat. Really, uh, you don't want to get get caught on those. Yep. So go but, through meat, metal, anything in their way. They'll yeah. fight right through it. But nevertheless, good luck today, and uh, thank you so much for showing us your bike. I appreciate it. So now. Because of the inclement weather, many of these guys are trailering their bikes here in uh, big panel vans or uh, trailers. And basically what they do is they actually set up the trailer with um, some, like almost like a shower curtain, and then they put a heater inside the trailer to keep the bikes warm and to stay warm just in general themselves throughout the time span of this three hour long race. I mean, I've been here since 8.30 in the morning. A lot of these guys have been here even earlier, checking out the track and doing bike prep uh, to get ready for the actual race. So I'm set up here at the starting line. Everyone is lined up based on their classes and whatnot. Uh, from what I understand, from what I've heard from people that have been at this race before, uh, with this many racers on the ice, once they all start up their engines, you're gonna kind of almost feel like a pounding kind of in your chest and on the ice, almost like when fireworks go off, you feel that vibration. Um, all of these engines starting up at once and um, everyone taking off is a, a, apparently a really surreal experience that I'm super excited to experience. Talking to some of the racers in the pit, they had been spraying WD-40 on uh, their brake levers and whatnot, and they were telling me that they do that because all the snow that gets kicked up actually locks out their brakes um, and uh, cakes on there and freezes so to the point where they can't even use them. In particular, in this corner over here, it seems to be that uh, there's quite a bit of snow built up on the track and people keep sliding into the uh, snowbank on the outside corner. So as I mentioned before, this corner got so bad that mid-race they actually are pulling out one of the plow trucks to clean off the track as these racers go by. And I would say that's definitely a hazard for a racer. So I managed to find a really cool spot right by the uh, finish line with the RFID tracker. And uh, got like a really cool angle of all of the uh, racers coming around this uh, hairpin turn. Um, just watching this though, it really makes me want to, you know, get a bike and some tires and start practicing on my own and kind of maybe eventually take up the sport of ice racing. Now for those of you that don't know, this ice race, the steel shoe ice race is one of the biggest and most prestigious races around as you can see the major crowd in the background here right there oh perfect Dave you got taping off your boot here hang on All right. So we're just
just about three hours into the race. We do have the white flag out, now letting the racers know that they are currently on. They're going into their last lap of the race. Really just an awesome, awesome time here. Yes, I am freezing, but that's to be expected. It's ice racing, and that's the whole fun, you know, behind the sport is that, you know, you're doing something that is challenging, yet rewarding at the same time. So we're inside now. I'm gonna show you what the trophy looks like, and this is the actual steel shoe kind of that replicates what uh, the racers are essentially wearing. Um, and it uh, symbolizes, you know, uh, the fights for paying the expenses of injured racers uh, that go down uh, through the AMA. Really, just make sure to check out the Steel Shoe Fund. Uh, Google them and, uh, you know, find out how you can get involved in the charity. Really, it's just a great organization with a really meaningful story behind it. But that concludes today's video, Biker Bros. This is the Gen Z Biker from Road Dirt TV, Ride Life. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to my personal, personal channel, Gen Z Biker. Like this video, comment below what you thought, and uh, if you've ever went ice racing yourself.